Dave Weinberg from the Press of Atlantic City getting ready for Eagles and Cowboys and some other uh, things happening. I want to get uh, his take, number one, on the uh, fight. I know he wrote a column at PressofAtlanticCity.com that a uh, Wilder Fury rematch in Atlantic City would be music to your ears. Snow is not music to our ears, Dave, but a fight rematch in AC would be. The possibilities of that, though, seem slim and none. Uh, probably slim. I don't know about none. I mean, there were there like I wrote there. I've been you know, Atlantic City used to be the the go to spot for for big fights, even uh, especially heavyweight fights. Um, and I would argue that I would think Atlantic City might be a pretty good fit because the British uh, boxing fans they usually travel in droves to to support their people, and um, Atlantic City is a lot closer to England than than uh, L A is. So I would hope that. I would hope they'd be in the running, but yeah, you're right. It's probably, uh, you know, uh, it's probably not likely to happen. But I, I can always hope, I guess. Yeah, man, and, and I know like uh, L.A. and some of the uh, other like Vegas, the, the venue size, right? Is that one of the problems? Like when people say, "Why not Atlantic City?" Is it the size of the venue or is it cost? Uh, cost more than anything. Uh, labor costs that Boardwalk Hall, from what I'm, from what I hear, are, are pretty uh, exorbitant and. Uh, that makes it tough. I don't think the size of the arena matters as much. I mean, you can fit like probably like fourteen thousand in Boardwalk Hall for mm-hmm. a big fight, which is what you know, they used to draw for like Gotti Ward uh, and you know some of the other big ones. So uh, I don't think that that's the problem. I think it's just the fact that um, a I don't know if there's a lot of casinos that are willing to to to, to flip the bill. I mean, when you had the big fights like with Tyson, uh, the casino association would always band together, buy up tickets. Uh, for their preferred customers, and the fact that you know there's you know more casinos like down in the inlet and uh, over in the marina section, uh, I think they're a little less hesitant to do that because they don't know they're not sure that their customers are going to come back to their casino. So I think that that, that I think that's one of the problems, and the fact that uh, Bally's or Caesars, excuse me, has been going through some financial difficulties, and they were the ones who who pretty much sponsored most of the big fights back in the '90s and the early 2000s. Uh, we're talking with uh, Dave Weinberg, Hall of Fame boxing writer, also covers the Eagles for the Press of Atlantic City. So uh, what did you think about the fight? It turns out to be a draw. And, of course, when people see draw in boxing, uh, it, it gives the boxing the bad, eye, the black eye, the bad name again. Number one, how did you score the fight? Who did you think won? Uh, or did you think uh, the draw was fair? Uh, well, let me preface it by saying anybody who like, scores a fight on TV, um, you know, I do, but – you really, it's never really, it's really not accurate because you're not in the same position as the judges at ringside who they, you know, all three judges only have one vantage point to see the action. It's not like they rotate around the ring between rounds, which I think they might want to consider doing in the future. And, you know, they don't have any benefit of instant replay, no, you know, multiple angles, no slow motion. So they're just going by what they're, the naked eye sees. So that's what sometimes, they, that's why you have uh, controversial decisions because what, one guy in one corner of the, or one judge in one corner of the ring is seeing is not necessarily what the, the the other two judges are looking at. So uh, that's when you get like controversial decisions. For this one though, uh, I I think a draw was pretty was pretty much fair. I will say that I thought Fury won eight of the twelve rounds, but Wilder had the two knockdowns, which you know count for count for extra. So if you go eight to four, then you factor in the two knockdowns, that comes out to a draw, which I, I think is pretty accurate. Yeah, I, I thought I thought that Fury had won the fight, but the two knockdowns I think evened it out a little bit. If you were to ask me to pick a winner, I would have probably said Fury, but I kind of agree with what you're saying. The fact that the two knockdowns and then the way the rounds went out, I can understand the draw. We'll see if it ends up coming to uh, Atlantic City. When do you think that fight might happen? From what I'm from what I'm uh, I'm hearing, it sounds like the spring which would be perfect because, you know, Atlantic City is always talking about needing, needing events to, to, to bulk up the, show, the so-called shoulder season before summer hits. So, you know, I think that would be like the perfect time and the perfect spot. I'm just hoping that the various entities, you know, the Casino Association, like I said, the um, uh, New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority, the CRDA, the, uh, anyone, who, anyone and everyone who could possibly influence this, I think, should get behind it because this is like, this is a once in a decade kind of fight that I think people would really want to see, and I think it would be a a boost for everybody in the in the city. Dave, you know, Mike asked you about the draw and how it, it have the it can have the appearance of a black eye for the sport, and you know, for the average boxing fan, like 
like myself, I, I'm I'm not a big boxing fan. I'm not following it throughout the year. I don't know all yeah. the big names, the up and coming names. But Saturday night, I got together with a group of friends and we watched it. And oh, cool. the, the you know the draw for me is frustrating. And the scoring system, I feel like, is a little antiquated. So, do you feel like boxing is going to adjust their system and their scoring? you know, anytime soon, or is this draw kind of intentional and now we have an exciting rematch coming up? Well, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because New Jersey is known for uh, its innovation and uh, willing to experiment with, with judging. Um, they've been doing it both with boxing and with MMA. They're the first, um, the first state to implement instant replay for like controversial like calls and stuff. But in terms of judging, I know like when uh, in MMA specifically, Nick Lumbo, who who kind of runs the uh, the MMA portion of the of the uh, for for the control board, um, actually experimented with having a fourth judge behind the scenes, uh, judging it from a monitor, mm. uh, in addition to the three people at ringside. And you know, if there was a tie or there was a you know a, a close decision or whatever, they would often refer to that judge to to, to break any disputes or to resolve disputes and stuff, but uh, it's kind of funny because I, I, they actually invited me to judge one time, and uh, I did one fight from ringside, I did one fight from back in the monitor, and, and, and all, in both cases, my scores were pretty much identical to the ones that, are, that the other three judges were, were using, so I, I don't, something has to be done. For me personally, I don't think you should ever score a round even. Somebody had to have won the round. Right. Um, I, you know, I'm not, I don't believe in 10, 10 rounds at all. Um, I don't care if it's like a minute, you know, somebody won like one second more than the other guy, but I, I'm given, I, whenever I score a fight and I do it all the time, hmm. I'm always given one round. I'm giving the round to one person or the other. I'm never scoring an even round. I think that might go a long way to, to maybe resolving the problem too. Has anybody ever thought of like, why not just have five judges? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the New Jersey was thinking of adding a fourth judge or, or like what I mentioned earlier, I think they should at least rotate, uh, you know, every round, you know, so you're not stuck in the same place the whole time. There was a made, there was a big, huge brouhaha a few years ago, more than a few years ago, uh, when uh, I believe it was um, Holyfield fought uh, Lennox Lewis, maybe, and it was clear that Holyfield had won, but one of the judges scored it for Lennox Lewis, and it was a huge uproar, and the judge tried to explain that, look, I was stuck in one vantage point. I wasn't as close to the ring as I normally was. This is at Madison Square Garden. Um, I was a few feet, few further feet away. Um, the referee was blocking my view a lot of times, so I really couldn't see what I needed to see. And you know, I could only judge by, on what my view was. And you know, that, that's a problem with with the sports and, and with MMA too. I think the judges should be able to to look at different and look look at look at fights from different angles before they you know put in their scorecards. Yeah, I mean to to to. Have the judge say, "Hey, I, my my vantage point was blocked, therefore I was unable to yeah. efficient, uh, sufficiently do my mm -hmm. job." Uh, sounds a little uh, ridiculous here. All right, Dave Weinberg <laughs> from the Press of Atlantic City, uh, longtime Eagles beat writer, Hall of Fame boxing writer. While we have you, Dave, let's get a fire a couple of Eagles things. Even if they beat oh. Dallas, even if they beat Dallas, they're only tied. Does it make you feel better if they win the game? Is it okay? They're gonna, they're they're fine. They're back on track, or is it still? Eh, you got to beat the because you're gonna have to beat the Rams or the Texans, right? Right, correct. And um, I think it's, it's a big win if they do beat Dallas. I mean, I was to be honest with you, I it's a I'm real not, big win. I wasn't all that impressed with what they've done the last two weeks, only because of who they played. I mean, they beat the Giants and you know barely, and then they beat Mark Sanchez, which you know anybody was probably going to be able to do. So. Um, but I think this Cowboys game is the one that's really going to tell whether they're legitimate contenders or not, or if they're just kind of like hoping against Hope to get into the playoffs. Um, anything in the walk? You mentioned Sanchez, but Sanchez doesn't play defense. Anything from the offense that you say, finally, I, I've changed my view on this team. Uh, yeah, they. I thought the offensive line played much better than they have been, um, and I think, I, for the credit, I think they're really spreading the ball around much better. They finally figured out the, uh, a role for Golden Tate. He's more more involved. Um, I thought Corey Clement seems to be back to where he was last year. Uh, for whatever reason, he seemed to be in a funk for the first half of the season or so. 
Um, but he seems to be back to his old form. And getting Darren Sproles back was a big spark, too. Um, not, I wouldn't say, like, a huge, a huge benefit, but just the fact that you have him on the field uh, and what he can bring when he's, uh, when he's healthy to your offense, that versatility uh, makes defenses kind of uh, take notice when he's out there. So uh, I just the, the overall versatility of the offense is what I was, uh, I was happy to see. And Carson Wentz kind of getting out of the pocket a little bit more. Uh, using his legs it indicates to me that maybe he's uh, that much closer back to being 100%. Dave, talk about uh, the Darren Sproles return and his impact. I mean, not not a huge night, but obviously that that run has been the talk of his uh, return back. So how do you think, I mean, not only in the game, but moving forward here in these crucial remaining four games for the Eagles? Um, I think it's a, it's a huge benefit from an emotional standpoint for the team because, I mean, he's not the most talkative guy, but he's a really – strong leader in the locker room, even though he's quiet. And uh, you could see it just by the way after he scored, the way everybody was embracing him, high-fiving him and hugging him. And even Doug Peterson went over and congratulated him. And that tells you what Sproles means to the team, both on and off the field. Um, honestly, I was kind of – I not have written, and I, I guess I have to apologize, but I didn't think – I didn't see the point of bringing him back at this, you know, at this point of the year after missing 10 games. I didn't see what – he would be able to bring to the offense. So I guess I underestimated his impact as far as, uh, you know, the chemistry of the team goes, though. And, uh, you know, he, he's a great guy. and he's a, he's a terrific player when he's healthy. So hopefully he can stay out there and help the Eagles win a couple more games. Uh, Dave Weinberg, Press of Atlantic City, at Press AC Weinberg. So was uh, Donnie or Marie the nicer uh, Osmond? <laughs> uh, Marie. <laughs> She's still pretty hot, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that uh, she's still pretty hot? Would you say that uh, that is uh, no cosmetic surgery done to, to her face there? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. All right. Uh, you can uh, check out what they're we're both, talking about. They were both tremendously nice people, though. I mean, they're real genuine, uh, not afraid to make fun of each other, make fun of themselves. Um and like as I, as you probably read, I won a, we won a Twitter contest only because we were I'm probably like the only one in the audience that's on Twitter. But <laughs> you know, that being said, I we got down to the front row and got to got to meet them backstage, and they they were extremely nice and uh, very it was a very entertaining show. Yeah. Although I'd rather see a fight. Right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, for what we're talking about, you can check out the picture. Uh, at uh, Press AC Weinberg. That is the picture that is used for his column on bringing fights back to AC because he wasn't able to watch the fight because he was at the Donnie and uh, Marie show. Uh, where was that? And where was that? It was, it was at Porgata. Okay, at Porgata. So uh, you can see the picture of Dave and his wife and the uh, Osmonds there. All right, uh, check that out at Press AC Weinberg on Twitter. Okay, Dave, thanks, pal. Oh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it.